Hey, everyone, and welcome to a special episode on the podcast. I am joined by my husband, Mike. Um, so we wanted to talk to you guys today about what I would consider a sensational topic. I don't usually address these um, publicly. I do within people we work with, ministry people, people we're in relationship with, usually not publicly. But um, it's something that we've been seeing out there, a lot of people talking about it. And we started to see people take the scriptures out of context. And um, that's something that really tends to irk me. So I decided to go against what I usually do and touch on it, but from a little bit of a different perspective, because we're going to try to do our best to discuss this topic without focusing on what we don't believe on, mm -hmm. believe in, right? We're going to focus on what we do and explain ourselves and do our best to do it according to scripture. Um, there are things that are flat out opinions that we can't support. So if that comes along, well, in my opinion, um, I think that lacks a lot within the Christian circles. A lot of people assert their opinions as fact, um, and then people take it as Bible. So pun intended, pun intended. <laughs> so um, the topic we're going to talk about today is uh, the He Gets Us commercial that aired during the Super Bowl. Um I saw the commercial because I was watching the Super Bowl. I'm not too Christian or su spiritual to watch a football game. Um, it was a great game. Super awesome. It was. Um, and I did see this commercial, but I've also seen this commercial throughout the year. So it first aired, it's called a He Gets Us campaign. It first aired last Super Bowl. Um, for those of you who don't know and just kind of have been jumping on a bandwagon of hate on this campaign, um, it did air, la air last year for the Super Bowl. There was a little bit of contention about it, but nothing like this year, and I understand why. Um, but it also runs during normal TV, so I've watched TV and seen their commercials also. It just got a lot of special attention because it was at the Super Bowl ad and then some prominent Christian leaders started posting about it and it became this big whole thing. Um, so we just thought we'd we'd cover it here. Um, a Facebook post, a social media post just doesn't do it justice. There's no way to cover our full opinions on the matter in a Facebook post, just like I will say, there's no way to preach the full gospel on a Sunday morning. Right. It's just not possible. The gospel is so full, <laughs> right? Like the full gospel. It's so full. You just can't do it. Um, so we're going to talk about the, he gets us commercial, but I wanted to start off with, the biblical foundation that they tried to base this commercial off of, which is the foot washing. Mm -hmm. The only foot washing the Bible talks about uh, that was written about um, is when during the Passover feast or what we call the Last Supper. I do write about this in my book and it's going to be in my upcoming book as well. Because John 13 through 18 is red letters. Jesus is there with his disciples. They were not yet apostles at the time. They were disciples. And he was giving them like last lessons. This right. is what I want you to know before I, before I go. Yeah. Very important lessons. And it starts off with the foot washing. So remember that there are cultural traditions that come into play. So before I read it, actually... Can you share what you know about foot washing and the culture and all that, just to give some context before before we start? Yeah, so uh, in the Jewish culture during Second Temple Judaism, which was about the time of Jesus, um, in that culture and really even before that, um, these people lived in, a, in an environment where they wore sandals, they walked in sand, 
um, and they would wash their feet in their hands uh, before bed and then also before um, meals. Mm -hmm. It was a very common tradition. Um, so washing your feet, washing your hands, um, and it was a, a thing that they did quite often. So it was, it wasn't abnormal or weird. Like today, if that were to happen, we'd be like, what the heck is going on? You know, it wasn't that at all. Um, it was a very common thing, happened a lot. And, um, you know, Jesus may have, uh, I'll just throw this out there. Jesus may have washed actually a lot of people's feet. We don't know. We don't that, know. Yeah. It's not, it's not recorded. Um, but we know that he did, um, we know what was recorded and what we don't know though is what was not recorded. Mm -hmm. And, but this is, you know, so also foot washing in no way in the original context, foot washing in no way, um, said or made the statement that you agreed with someone. Right. It didn't say you approved of their lifestyle. It didn't say that, uh, you know, you were now perfect because your feet were washed mm -hmm. or I support you a hundred percent, meaning I agree with how you live your life. No, I mean, Judas was there. Well, we're going to get into that, yeah. but, the, but it was a very practical thing to do. Absolutely. How about people of wealth during that time? If they had servants, did they clean their own feet or would servants clean their feet upon arriving home yeah you're the lowest member would wash the other people's feet so the servant washed the master's feet or the person putting on the, the dinner the dinner so okay. like if you invited people to your house um it wasn't uncommon the way i understood it mm -hmm. from from the studies i've done it wasn't uncommon for you if you wanted to show your gratitude you want to show make them feel welcome you know you would wash their feet okay Okay. It was this, you were serving, you were giving, it was part of the process Okay, just as much as making food, breaking bread. And clearly Jesus was putting on. That. Right. So, so let's that, read, you know. let's read. I'm going to read the entire chapter of John 13. You and I are very big into context. Okay. So we're going to read the whole thing because I think it's important for us to see the intent of what John is trying to share with us about this foot washing and the teaching as a whole. And I really encourage you to go read John 13 through 18. You could literally read that for an entire year and learn and learn and learn. It's all red letters, which is Jesus speaking. It's a lot of lessons. The one thing that I will say is, and I, I briefly mentioned is at this time, they were, they were disciples. They weren't yet apostles. They became apostles after Jesus ascended. So, yeah. And this was Jesus preparing the disciples to become apostles. They were going to become leaders. At this point, they were not leaders. Jesus was a leader. So John 13, and I'm reading this out of the NLT because of its readability and its storytelling. It's very easy to understand. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that this hour had come to leave this world and return to his father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God, and he would return to God. So he got up from the table, he took off his robe, he wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had wrapped around him. So I just want you guys to envision this scene. Jesus took off his robe. He put a towel around him and was washing their feet and using that same towel that was around them to dry. So I want you to imagine this knowing here's the son of God, the Christ, the one who was coming to redeem the world in doing this thing, right? When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. 
No, Peter protested, you will never, ever wash my feet. And Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. So just keep in mind that Judas was there. Jesus knew Judas. Ju Jesus knew Judas was going to betray him. And it was Peter that he said, if you don't let me do this, you're not part of us. He didn't say that to Judas. He yeah. said it to Peter. That's a whole other lesson. Yeah. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. And Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I'm doing? Now, keep in mind, Jesus is going to very clearly explain why he's doing this. So we can assume all day long, yeah. but it's very clear. Jesus is about to explain his intent, which he didn't do very often. He often spoke in par parables, mm -hmm. but here he is being very clear. He said, do you not understand what I'm doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Yeah. So he's making it very clear. I am the master. You're the servant. I'm washing your feet. If you don't let me do this for you, you are not part of this anymore. You got to step away. And it, just for context, I'm going to keep reading. I am not saying these things to all of you. Yeah. I know the ones I have chosen, but this fulfills a scripture that says, the one who eats my food has turned against me. He's talking about Judas. And he's saying this because he knows that Judas is not going to be an apostle. But he's teaching all of them. He's not excluding Judas. I tell you this beforehand so that when it happens, you believe that I am the Messiah. I tell you the truth. Anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me, and anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the Father who sent me. Now, Jesus was deeply troubled, and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. The disciples looked at each other, wondering whom he, whom he could mean. And the disciple Jesus loved, which was John, was sitting next to Jesus at the table. Simon Peter mentioned to him to ask who he was talking about. So that disciple, John, leaned over to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it? And Jesus responded to John, it is the one whom I give the bread I dip in the bowl. He didn't tell the whole table. He didn't tell everyone. He told John. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Iscariot. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus told him, hurry and go do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas, since Judas was their treasure, some thought Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food to give money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. Um, and then it talks, and then it, and then it keeps going, and it talks about Peter's denial and how Jesus was saying Peter was going to deny him. So clearly, I think you had addressed it. There's no affirming of sin going on here. There's no, you know, I'm only going to wash the feet of people who are perfect, of people who are sinless, of people. No, that's that's not what's happening here. Not only that, it's 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 even bigger than that to the point of um, there was no. Uh, no, wow, I got to be careful how I say this. He knew that Judas was going to betray him. Yes, and it care. says that, yeah. I'm not saying he didn't care, but he didn't care. He, he was going to serve anyways. He was going to wash his feet anyways. Yep. He didn't agree with what Judas was doing. It was, He knew there was a problem. He knew he was being betrayed, and he still did it. And not only that, not only did he know judas was going to betray and didn't stop him he didn't turn the other disciples against judas no he didn't sit there and say 
there's a traitor here. He's so wrong. He's so evil. He's going to turn against me. Don't be like Judas. No. That's not what Jesus did at all. Yeah. And you're going to see that even throughout scripture. And, you, you know, for those of you watching and listening, you can go and do your own research. So by all means, don't take our word for it. You can go through all of scripture and you will see that Jesus never went out of his way yeah. to call people out. Every time he made a, you know, he called, he did call Pharisees and Sadducees vipers. He, he did come against them in assertive ways. It was never him going and doing it in silo. It was, he was teaching and they were coming at him while he was teaching and he was addressing it in the moment. So imagine you're in a church service and you're preaching and someone comes against you and you deal with it in that moment, but you're not going out into the streets or onto the internet purposely calling people vipers. Let's just say it that way. Right. That's not what Jesus, how Jesus handled things. I would argue that Jesus may do that if he was here today, um, but it would only be the religious he would go after. Right. But I don't think his mission was not to go after the religious. His message was to preach the gospel, that the kingdom that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. Well, his mission was to preach the gospel to the the most religious. Right. The most difficult. And he was converting them. So his message did get tough at times. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I don't think he would have... Stra I mean, it's just an opinion. I don't think he would have strayed away from social media. Um, oh, no, I'm not saying he wouldn't be on. So I do think Jesus would be active on social media if he was here today. <laughs> such, a weird, <laughs> such a weird thing to topic. say. I don't know. But I do think he would. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I don't think his objective would be to call out people he didn't agree with. I think he would he didn't really focus on preaching what he came to preach, what yeah, he, he never even in. he never even addressed the Gentiles the whole time. Exactly, because that was he had a mission. He had a he had a he had a message he was preaching. Right, and his message was he stayed on message. Right, like he had a message, he stayed on message, and he never backed down from that. Right, I want to keep reading just because there's the verse of my life here that also will come into play with he gets us. Um, so. Again, John 13, 31, it continues, as soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, the time has come for the son of man to enter into his glory and God will be glorified because of him. And since God receives glory because of the son, he will soon give glory to the son. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I'm going. And then he says this. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. And I talk about this extensively, preach about it, go look it up. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of tea. And he says, so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. That's right. So it is not the miracles you do, the people who fall over when you pray for them, the number of people you talk to Jesus about, the the how many times you go to church in a week it is your love for one another that right. will tell people who that you are a follower of jesus a disciple of jesus a student of jesus the greatest commandment up until that point was love god above all else love your neighbor as yourself but there's a flaw yeah. because some people don't love themselves very well and jesus calls us to something greater and he says no more are you the standard Right. Jesus says, I am the standard. I want you to love people the same way I love people. And this came right after the foot washing. Right. And then in 14, if we back up for a moment, it says, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too ought to wash one, one another. another's feet. In other words, he's saying, I'm your lead, I'm your teacher. Excuse me. I'm your rabbi. I'm your leader. I stooped down below you. Mm -hmm. You should have been washing my feet. I stooped down below you and I washed your feet. Okay. At a minimum, you should be willing to wash one another's feet, mm -hmm. which in, in essence is the exact 
um, portrayal in min- at minimum, it's the exact portrayal of the Super Bowl commercial. Yes. Because it's saying we should be washing in one another's feet, which like, was the no, whole like, point of what Jesus said. So why we suddenly have a, such a huge problem with that, based on several other factors we'll get into, but at a minimum, we're, if you disagree with parts of the commercial, fine. But at a minimum, we need to recognize the beauty of washing one another's feet no matter what. Right. Whether you're getting along, whether you're arguing, whether you're above one another or below one another, whether you see yourself as more valuable or less valuable, um, whatever social hierarchy you're in, we're to wash one another's feet. So that message is now being put out there in a massive, the biggest <laughs> stage you right. can find. And people are like, they spent... One of the questions I got was they spent millions doing this. Like, shouldn't they have given it to the poor? Okay, that's a whole nother teaching there. Because when you give to the poor, sometimes you actually hurt them. Right. How you give to the poor is key, mm-hmm. right? So it's not about... But, but there's an assumption, and we're going to talk about assumptions made on this commercial, that they don't give. Well, that group actually does give. Yes. Spoiler alert, they give millions. Whenever way you have, whenever you Super have any rich person, rich people give. It's just listen, the 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 law of so so I have a friend day. who's, you know, gives to that group and and um they give millions, mm-hmm. millions to the poor. Okay, first of all. Um and they also want the message that we need to love one another. And you know, if the Christians would get on board with loving one another, and that message actually became a reality in their lives. Think about how many more poor could be helped. If you have, if thousands or, or, or even hundreds of people looked at that commercial and said, you're right, I need to love one another, and they reach out a helping hand and they help someone in need, mm-hmm. how many more people are helped? If, if I give millions to the poor, I'm not helping them. But if I can teach millions of people to help the poor, help those in need, now we have something. It's the same concept of give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Same concept here. Super Bowl commercial, properly placed. Ideally, I don't know if it'll work, but ideally should teach people to love one another, which is going to help more poor and more reach needy more people. people, reach more people that need help than anything else, because now you've recruited an army of people. Right. But instead, did the Christians get that? Mm, I what, don't think so. What they're trying to do is bridge a divide. And I understand, I do understand where some people are coming from, because I know there's a concern about um sending out a message that um change isn't required for being a disciple of Jesus. Yeah, I saw that. But we're not but what we need to understand is which so many people preach Jesus meets people where they're at the change comes after, right? Yeah. And we need we need to give what Jesus was teaching so very clearly and he explained is Listen, there's servants and there's masters, and usually the servants do this for the masters. But in my kingdom, in the kingdom I came to rule over, where I am king, that doesn't matter. Right. The servant gets their feet washed as much as the master does. Mm -hmm. It's in, in, um, I heard one time a teaching that I also, uh, happened to put in my book because I thought it was a pretty cool perspective because washing people's feet, um, is kind of not relevant to us nowadays. Like you, you know, we have shoes. So what is washing feet? You know, there's in weddings, sometimes people wash Ironically, each other's feet. Ironically, I still wash my feet though. What, when you're taking a shower, but not when you walk in the house. <laughs> But like people do foot washing ceremonies in weddings. Sometimes they do it at church. Like if someone's being ordained, you know, and it's a very wonderful That's gesture. It's weird. Well, right, right now it's a very wonderful gesture and there's a reason behind why they're doing it. But what Jesus was teaching was more about service. 
Yeah. It was exactly about, it was. and, and Jesus said, I don't, to Peter, I don't need to clean all of you. It's just your foot, your feet. That's dirty. That's what I'm going to clean. And the way I see it is like, how do I apply it to my life today? And this, again, this is interpretation. So this, this is not how scripture says it. This is how I interpret it to apply it to my life. Mm -hmm. Because I was very clear, I'm going to state what's opinion and what's interpretation and all that. So interpretation for me is I'm going to meet people where they need help. So I can go in, let's say someone's on the side of the road and they have a flat tire and they call me for help. Washing their feet isn't telling them, sorry, uh, oh, I'm so sorry about that. I'm going to pray for you. Washing their feet is getting in my car. That's what I do when I drive by them. Yeah. I'm saying when you know somebody. <laughs> um, oh, is, pray for that one. Is driving your car and helping the person with a flat tire. Right. It's someone not having money for groceries to feed their children. And yeah. I'm not just going to say, oh, I'm going to pray for you. It's me helping you, whether it's I go buy groceries for you or I give you money to buy groceries. It's meeting people where they're at. Or I teach them how to get money to go buy their right. groceries. Where do they need help? That, that's a whole other topic of enabling. But the whole point is you're going to serve the person where they need it. Yeah. Right? So, you know, telling someone, I'm going to go wash your feet. It's great. And it's a beautiful ceremony. But really the lesson Jesus is teaching is no one is above or beneath anyone in my kingdom. We all serve. Yeah. Everyone's serving. J even Jesus was serving. That's the whole point. So back to the he gets us. I was hearing a lot of condemnation against the, the people who funded the commercial. Mm -hmm. So instead of just taking what people were saying at value, I decided to go look it up. And there's a lot of information on their website. And I thought, this is great because I'm very big into the intent of the author or the creator. Because yeah. there's a lot of assumptions being made about even the, the snippets of the commercial. like, and, and it's a lot of its assumptions. A lot of people assume- What are some of those political, assumptions? Like, this is a political agenda. Okay. Um, this is trying to get us to accept the LGBTQ, okay. condoning their thing. I even had people say all the people who are doing the foot washing are white. Mm, not true. But... Which is not true. So I saw a lot of assumptions being made. So I decided, let me go to the source and check it out. Yeah. Because okay. context is key. So I'm just going to read this really quick. It's very short. It's on their website. Um, but it talks about kind of where they came from. There's a lot of Q&As in here too, if you want to go digging. But this is what they wrote. How did the story of Jesus, the world's greatest love story, get twisted into a tool to judge, harm, and divide? How do we remind people that the story of Jesus belongs to everyone? These questions are the beating heart of He Gets Us. We hope to remind everyone, including ourselves, that Jesus' teachings are a warm embrace, not a cold shoulder. That he didn't let pro this or anti that opinions prohibit him from seeing value in all people. He gets us, invites you to explore Jesus' story on your own terms and at your own pace. Our message isn't from a particular church, nor is it affiliated with any one denomination. Our campaign comprises humble perspectives from a diverse group of Jesus fans and followers with a variety of faith journeys and lived experiences bound by a common desire to rediscover and share the compelling story of Jesus's life in a new way. We will make mistakes. This is them saying it. We will make mistakes. Like anyone with a public message or who sets out to share an idea, we won't always get it right expect us to be human. The campaign exists to remind us of the example that Jesus set while inviting all to explore his teachings so we can all follow his example of confounding unconditional love because he gets us, mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. That is the heart. And if you uh, go on their page, they talk and about- you're not a paid spokesman for them. 
No, I'm not. I just came to check check the facts <laughs> because people were saying how they're funded by the left and all this stuff. And it, they're actually, it's a group of Christian people um, in on their page. They talk about their views um, about are th what their agenda is. So that's a question. What's your agenda? I'm not going to go into it here. You can go look for yourselves. Don't take my word for it. Go look for yourselves. Um, are they trying to get people to go to church? What's their view about LGBT? Um, what they believe about Jesus. So they believe Jesus is the son of God, that he died, that he rose, that he ascended. Um, so you can also see who's behind it. Yeah, you can see who's behind it and all of that. They also have right when you go in, it's so annoying to use this computer without um without a mouse. Um they have the history, which I'm not going to go into it because it's pretty long, but they have the history of the foot washing commercial. Mm -hmm. um, now, like I said, they they all also did last year's Super Bowl commercial, which is who is my neighbor. That's right. And they addressed that my neighbor is everyone. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, I did not know they believe this, but I have a whole chapter in my book about who is my neighbor and scripturally walk through how it is everyone everyone is our neighbor and jesus taught this to the jews that's right because to them loving your neighbor only meant loving a certain amount of certain groups of people and jesus came and said your neighbor is everyone basically and then he said love your enemies pray yeah. for them which is the basis of the foot washing commercial. So I encourage you to go read it. They have a whole thing about the foot washing, why they chose it. Um, but one of the things I wanted to do now was go through and look at each. So hopefully you saw it and you're not making judgments about the commercial without actually seeing it. So watch the commercial. Um, the Also the entire thing, not just one screenshot that you don't agree with because that's happening too. So the first picture, so how would you describe this picture? So it, it's, um. I don't know if I'm going to be able to put this in the video because I'm not that fancy with video, but I'll put like a link um, in the show notes too. Yeah, I mean, we've the, got in, in- What's this one? You know, we've got uh, an el an, a middle-aged to slightly elderly man sitting in a chair and then a young- guy washing his feet it appears that looks like a family to me like they just had supper together and that's a son with the dad that's, that's how the, i see it yeah i would say that's probably correct okay so that that's the image i get yeah okay so a son washing his father's feet right is really the caption and the mom and the sister they should have done the little background. captions on that but okay i'm just kidding that it's artistry that's what people need to understand too this is not a preaching this is artistry by the way a whole entire white family for those that are worried about that part yeah we'll talk about that later i'm not going to go into the skin color at this point okay so that's, what do you see here i i can't help it it's the it's part of the image do, do i not i can't point out the skin no color? because i didn't notice this the skin color of people until someone brought it up well i didn't either but now that they brought it up i, I can't not see it okay so what do you see in this <laughs> so i see an african-american man standing in a what looks like a pretty rough like an alleyway, alley. yeah, and with trash and stuff, and a police officer on his knees. Uh, uh looks like uh, appears to be a Hispanic police officer, possibly on his knees, washing his feet. Now, interesting in this image, the police officer also has his shoes off. Interesting. Uh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like, we're assuming after he got done, he also washed the officer's feet. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. He's, yeah, because there's no way the officer would have taken his shoes, shoes off, off out of nowhere. So they're washing each other's feet in this picture. This is, this is why oh, I'm that's saying. Amazing. This is why I'm saying looking at the images is important because the video clips. It's a 30 second commercial. So. Right. Okay, that's good. Okay. That was good. I like that. This one. All right. So everybody that's doing foot washing also is barefoot again. Yeah. Again. Yes. Right. We have a, a girl with short red hair and then a looks looks like a normal longer haired young girl as, as well. They, they appear to be in like a high school. A high school. Yeah. I see like lockers. Yeah. So it's just two girls. Two girls that look like they may be part of different social groups. Yeah. Yeah. You have styles. the short red hair, probably 
And then you have the kind of like the cheerleader type. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to say Just that. But, judgments, but yeah. Yeah, the girl next door type. They're portraying look. a picture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about this one? All right. So I, I it appears we have a, a and I, because I'm watching Gold Rush, uh, <laughs> a couple of minors, um, but they're probably not. They're probably cowboys or whatever, but we've got an Indian. Native uh, American. Native American, sorry. <laughs> um, and I, it appears to be a white elderly gentleman and a, na uh, a native uh, Indian. Um, and they're, they're, they're at, again, washing each other's feet because they both have their shoes off. Yep. So it's not just a white guy washing the Indian's feet. They're an Indian guy or a Native American guy is washing the white's feet. Sorry, I'm not very, very PC. I don't know all the proper <laughs> terminology. All right. So let's talk about this one. This was a hot one, too. Okay. So we have family planning clinic. Like a Planned Parenthood. And why place. they have it next to a sleazy motel is it's, <laughs> it's a little bit odd. <laughs> okay. Um, we got some protesters in the background, right. right? Just talking amongst themselves. Yeah, yeah. Not hitting each other or anything, but they got signs. I can't see read the signs from here, but um, and then we have uh what I, I'm assuming by how loose her clothing is a, a pregnant woman girl, yeah. girl sitting on a bench. And her feet are being washed by, it appears to be a a, a, a young girl and a middle-aged right. woman. Now with this one, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, I wanted to bring this up because I know this is controversial because again, one of the concerns is enabling, right? Yeah. Um, and Christians, and I'm not going to say all Christians because I do know Christians who are not pro-life, but we are pro-life. And yeah. Um, so one of the things that, studies have shown and and people who actually go to clinics to help people and to give them comfort and convince them to not get an abortion that there's other options for them and i want to separate that from from protesters okay because it's been shown that people who go to these clinics and pray for people and talk to them have way more effect than protesters. So Agreed. I think that this was looked upon negatively because, oh, there's protesters in the background and there's an agenda behind that. I just think it's showing those protesters, the way I see it is they're talking amongst themselves. They're not even concerned about this girl. And you have this woman who came to this girl and is serving this girl mm -hmm. and is loving and caring on her instead of yelling in her face that she's a sinner and going to hell. Yeah. Like there's, when you're in that situation where you're going to go to an abortion clinic, you're going to have a lot more effect talking to the person and saying, you know, I can help you. Like, let's talk about it. Then you telling her she's going to go to hell. Yeah. Right. Like. Give the person a solution. Jesus is a solution. Well, it's like you kind of told me, you said earlier today to me, you said, you know, how many people, you know, when the street pastor has a giant megaphone screaming at everybody, they're going to hell. How many people drop on their knees and go, please, I need Jesus. Yeah, I'm going like, to hell. Like, like, I've never seen that. That's why. Maybe it's happened, but. That's why it doesn't that. work. Like corner street preachers preaching doom and gloom doesn't work. Now I have gone out onto the streets and spoke with people helped people yes talked that's to not people what we're talking and, about yeah and um been able to um you know have real dialogue that's you know? different yeah that's and you're going out to give them hope you know to maybe pray for healing or whatever i've given yeah. them rides i've given them i've bought them hotel rooms i've given them we've had them food. over for thanksgiving i've had them for thanksgiving because <laughs> we're crazy yeah that wasn't very good the <laughs> smartest move um yeah i've done a lot for for, for people um okay so next one so i think this to to me even though they have two different hair colors i think it's a mother and daughter that's kind of how i see it yeah right and there's drinks on the floor so it looks like the mother may be like an alcoholic or struggles with alcohol and the kitchen kind of looks like a mess yeah that uh, yeah i'm leaning that way too i think that's i think that's this is definitely a mother who's in rough shape and a daughter who's washing her feet or or a friend yeah you know but showing love to her yeah when she's down yeah yeah okay next one um 
this looks like there's a bus yeah. and a group of people that probably look like they're homeless. Um, Which doesn't, it looks like a suburban neighborhood. So like a, so I, I don't understand. Well, now why. I don't know if I kind of took it as homeless and there's, so the, there's a woman washing the feet of another woman who has a baby in her hand. Oh, is that a baby? Yeah. Okay. So I kind of thought it was homeless. But people. again, you know, white woman, her shoes are off. I, <sighs> Both of them have their shoes off. Spanish, maybe? Um, Latin American woman? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. They, I would they say. both have their shoes off. Yeah. Both have their shoes off again. So again, the premise is, I mean, essentially, they're going to wash each other's feet. Right. Right. Um, that's, that's how that yeah, works. Cause why else would everyone else have their shoes off? Right. Okay. So this one. Okay. So this is a, um, appears to be like a, a white woman with her husband sitting behind her mm -hmm. and a Muslim couple. Yep. And she's washing the Muslim woman's feet. feet. Yep. Now the reason why I say Muslim is she has her head dressed She has a Habib on. on. Yeah. yeah. Habib is a hype, what you say. Yeah. And they're sure. sitting in the front yard. I'm sorry um, if I mispronounced that, but yeah. Okay. Okay, this one. All right, so this is obviously two groups of protesters screaming at each other. Yeah. And um, two girls sitting on the steps. Um, we have an African-American woman washing um, what appears to be a Latino woman's feet. Yeah. And they both look like women. To and me. they both have their sh their shoes off. Yeah. One of them could be a man, but I think it's a woman. Yeah. All right, and um, the, this one actually is the um, Big Lebowski guy, um, <laughs> and he's watching. Uh, he's watching uh, Russell, Ru Russell, uh, the big the basketball player, <laughs> um, Bill Russell's feet. It looks like. Uh, that's literally what they look like. Um, really cool house. It's like an old wood. Like, yeah, country home. Country home. Front porch. Dogs laying yeah. there. Um, and they're not washing each other's feet. They're both. They both have their feet, feet in the bucket. Yeah, they both have a foot in the bucket. Yeah. Um, it's kind of weird. Yeah. But I think I think that's what caused me to notice the other shoes off was this one because is there an like, assumption they're gay or something there or that's what i don't know again assumption right. i i look at this and see there's a black man and a white man and they're both washing the, each other's uh, feet the one is touching the other one's hand yeah like they're talking they just look like old friends to well, me there's a woman inside the house like a wife like, yeah okay okay so, so. but the, it also says diner where above oh, yeah. the door oh that does maybe it is a waitress could be a waitress we're very analyzing this and it has an open sign to the right yeah like, yeah it's like the part of one so definitely a diner okay so it's like a food establishment place yeah but they both have their feet in and they're both washing each other's feet yeah it looks like they're having a good time okay and this was the controversial one it's the last one I don't understand what's controversial about it. It looks like just a white man washing. It's like a priest. A man's. It's a priest washing a black person's foot. Is that what's controversial about it? No, what's controversial is the assumption that this person is part of the LGBT community. And this is what, one of, based on the shorts? Based on the outfit. And this, again, and they both have their shoes off here. This, again, is where it's an assumption. We're looking at this person and automatically assuming they're part of the LGBT community because of the outfit they have on. That, that was my my thing. And I, 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 Yeah, I guess I could see that. I, I see it. Yeah. But I, again, it's an assumption and a bit bigoted because you're looking at someone... And based on the way they're dressed, you're assuming something about them without knowing. Yeah. Okay. And the reason I have an issue with this is there's assumptions being made about this organization, about their, and they also talk about their- But even if it is, right? Even if that was the intent- um, Does it matter? Does it? Yeah. You still, 
you still serve. Exactly. You know, it, it, it doesn't. It, like if we don't reach out to them in this way, because clearly it looks like this person was out skating. Yeah. They're at the beach. They were out skating and there's a preacher and they're washing feet. Right. Something that we would probably do when we were out evangelizing yeah, and i know a lot of straight men that would dress us like that exactly so, that's right because because it's i mean it's a stocking the cap, fashion yeah cut off short shorts like that's very normal any, any any sitting so the shorts look short or whatever but the point here is do we really expect people to come to jesus already changed or do we come yeah, to them like, as they are since and when do we not the gospel? Since when do, do we decide? Since when do we not love the LBGQ community? Like, since when do we categorize? Okay, you're you're. This is your thing. This is your thing. I'm not going to love you, but I'm going to love you, right? But because washing isn't about acceptance. Washing isn't forcing your ways onto someone else. It isn't affirming that you 100 percent agree with their right. lifestyle like what if i'm not a catholic so and that guy appears to be a catholic priest mm -hmm. well i'm not gonna let him wash my feet yeah like who is, who I, I, is i'm it? not catholic i'm not allowing that like, right. that could be an attitude that someone could take and and and, and that but th that's not the point right and and again go back to that um picture don't they both have their they both have their feet they both off. have their shoes off again in every so picture. the assumption is that this if he's lgbq is also this the individual there the man there is going and to I wash apologize the for my feet. butchering the acronym it's lgbtq i'm sorry um just um yeah so it's it's just about like if I go and have coffee or lunch with someone who is part of the LGBT community, am I wrong? Am I condoning their behavior? Absolutely not. My whole point is to show love to people. Yeah, I'm not. Right? And to. Your to issues bring, are not mine. To bring people to Jesus and to come so people can come to know who Jesus really is. And, and one of the biggest things that I teach is. We are all made in the image and likeness of God, whether you're Christian or whether you're not, you're made in the image and likeness of God, and you may not look like it, and you may not be conforming to the image of Christ, which is what we're all destined to do. You may not be doing that, but my whole purpose in how I approach people is I want people to know, hey, you're made in the image and likeness of God. This is who God created you to be. And sometimes your anxiety, your depression, your frustrations, your feelings of emptiness is stemming from you not living the life God destined you to live, which no. is to bear his image. And I feel like so many times we're telling people what they're not supposed to do, not supposed to look like, not right. supposed to behave and we never tell them actually who they're created to if, be if the law and rules could save you jesus would have never needed to come exactly and also reason why did he have to ever ever stopped and th thought about why did he have to tell them the jewish people the disciples those that jesus was teaching why did he have to tell them to love one another why did he have to tell them to love their neighbor why did he have to tell them all of that, right? The reason being is, you know, and Jesus addressed this when he spoke with Nicodemus. He said, you guys, you know, you've lost your way. You need to look at this from the point of view of you are the answer to the world. Mm -hmm. You you are the one, you know, he doesn't say that specifically to Nicodemus, right? But he's alluding to it because he's looked to asking him to look at it from, an, from a heavenly point of view. The Jewish people were God's people, and they were the answer to the world. They were to be washing people's feet. They were to be loving one another. Yep. And they had lost their way. They had gotten way off track. They had rejected relationship in return for laws and rules. And the same thing is happening today in the Christian churches. Yep. We've rejected relationship. And we have chosen instead a bunch of rules and regulation and arguments and division. 
And we've got trying to abide by all of them mm -hmm. instead of understanding that we are the answer to the world. If you reject a whole group of people and say, I will not wash their feet because I disagree with them, woe be unto you. You got a problem. Well, how will you? Uh, if, You've missed it. If, let's say, you know, let's just for the sake of um, just being very general, let's say there's. Uh, Native America, uh, 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 a tribe of Indians in Brazil. No, because they're, let's say they're in Brazil. Still Americans. Okay. Stop so America. there's a tribe <laughs> of people who are isolated. Okay. Right. Are you not going to go to them and have a conversation with them and explain to them? what you believe are you just gonna go in there and tell them they're all going to hell like that's not that's not how you're gonna reach people people no. need to be reached and you can go on their website and it talks about why they did the super bowl ad and this is going to be an election year and every election year it's getting worse and worse with people coming against each other. And listen, I'm not saying you can't have an opinion. I have opinions. I have very strong opinions, which is why we're doing this video in the first place, because I have opinions. I'm not saying we can't have opinions. What I'm saying is after the last election and some before whatever, people literally lost relationships because of the difference of political opinions and political views and jesus like i mean let's read the gospels and let's see how jesus addressed different political views and even different uh because the jewish people also had sects they have had different groups like let's look at how jesus addressed that jesus did not shun or turn anyone away even the Pharisees, he didn't turn them away. He just called them out when they were disrupting his teaching. Yeah. But in for the sake of time, yeah, I'm almost out of time. Myself. Um, let's just address a GIF that was out there. Um, that when I saw it, 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 I was so disturbed by it. And by the way, this is I'm not pointing this at anyone because I saw it. So shared by a bunch of people. yes so if you're my friend and you may have posted this like please know i saw this all over the place which is why i wanted to address it especially because we have ministry and we teach people we mentor people and i want it to be very clear where we stand with with this particularly so it says it says uh it has x's and it says jesus didn't wash pharisees feet Jesus didn't wash Sadducees' feet. Jesus didn't wash, and it goes on and on about um, whose feet Jesus didn't wash. Okay, sorry guys, my had to go um, answer the door. But basically, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But it talks about all the feet that Jesus didn't wash, um, and the reason this bothered us is because. In my words, I'm going to say it in my words, and then you can kind of say how you want. In my words, Jesus ate every single day. Jesus prayed every day. Jesus went to the bathroom every day. He did? He did. He may have skipped a day. And, well, I don't know. Maybe he didn't, because it's not in the Bible. Good point. Right? So the whole point here is that I'm trying to make is just because the scriptures don't tell us like we don't know every miracle every healing every interaction jesus had we don't know who, all the people jesus had meals with which was also a very intimate thing to do and we know that he did eat with sinners because that was a big problem for some people too and so just because it's not in the bible doesn't mean it didn't happen so to say jesus didn't wash all these people's feet is a little foolish and presumptuous because we don't know he could have we just don't know that he did just like jesus used the bathroom every day we just it doesn't the bible doesn't say it, it doesn't mean it didn't happen so in my layman very uneducated way that's how i would explain it right so uh 
the list is Jesus didn't wash the Pharisees' feet. Jesus didn't wash the Sadducees' feet. Jesus didn't wash the feet of the Sanhedrin. Jesus didn't wash the feet of the demonic. I don't even know how to say that word. Uh, Godra. Um, Jesus didn't wash the feet of Herod. Jesus didn't wash the feet of his mother. Jesus didn't wash the feet of his earthly father. Um, and then it says, um, Jesus only washed the feet of his disciples. Foot washing is not Christ honoring the ways of man. It's how Christ honored and served those who had surrendered to his love and were dedicated to following him and his teaching. Oh, I have so many issues with this. How do we know that someone is a disciple of Jesus? By their love? By their love for one another. Not by if Jesus washed your feet or not. No. Nowhere in scripture does it say you are his disciple because he washed your stinking, nasty, sandy feet. Right. <laughs> Nowhere. It says by your love one for another, you're known as his disciple. And a child of God. It says, if you do not love one another, you are not my children. So this ridiculous statement at the end, is it's more than just that I disagree with it. It's, it's, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Um, I want to start at the top one, though, because this, these first few, Jesus didn't wash the Pharisees' watch feet. Okay. Jesus didn't wash the Sadducees' feet. Jesus didn't wash the Sanhedrin feet. Jesus didn't wash the feet of the demonic. Or Jesus didn't wash the feet of Herod. Jesus didn't wash the feet of his mother. Jesus didn't wash the feet of his father. You don't know that. Yeah, how do we know? Well, here's what I do know. I do know that it was very common for those in that place, for those in that area, to wash the feet of those. So the odds of him washing his mother's feet or his father's feet is actually really high mm -hmm. at some point during his lifetime. Um, he didn't at that moment in, 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 in the, the last supper. In yeah. the last supper, but he did, but he there is nothing saying he never did. And there, and by the way, Jesus was part of the pharisaical family. So every person he ever washed his feet, by including the disciples. Some of them were Pharisees. Some of them were Sadducees. So, yes, he did wash the Pharisees and Sadducees' feet. They were his own disciples. Came from that. Actually, I don't think any of them were part of. They were for those Pharisees? groups. Weren't they Pharisees? No, they were not educated. No, they were fishermen. Yeah, Pharisees and Sadducees were educated and participated well, John, in the Sanhedrin. Well, John's family and Jesus' family were the same one, and they were both Pharisaical. But they were not part of the they were not taught by the pharisees and sadducees jesus was not part of their group that's why they didn't like him teaching because he was it's like how dare you call yourself a pastor you didn't go to seminary he, they did not go so the pharisees and sadducees were the leaders of the jews mm -hmm. who made up the sanhedrin right i know that but there's 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 no we don't you know you cannot say what Jesus didn't do right because it says the books can't even hold everything that he did yeah. so it's it to me to me it's crazy to say you know that Jesus never washed a pharisee's foot never washed a sadducee's foot especially when it was so common back then that it could have happened. And the point that this whole GIF is making is if you wash their feet, they're a part of you, you agree with them, and you accept right. everything that they do. Mm -hmm. And guys, that is the very problem with Christianity today. That is the issue because they do not see that serving and loving one another is allowed outside of, of those that agree with them you it's and it We're, and i'm gonna use a word right now that's gonna may feel offensive but it's just to prove a point that's where the cultish environment yes. can breed because it's you're only allowed to be with people who are in your church 
or believe yeah. exactly as you believe. And as someone pointed out to me today, iron sharpens iron and you're never going to learn and grow if everyone you're around has your exact perspective. We all, listen, even me, I have a filter. I have a perspective. I've been studying the scripture, doing all this stuff, and I have certain lenses when I read scripture now because of things that I've learned. I admit that. And I will say that my issue with something like this is they're stating it as if it's a fact, yeah. a matter of fact. When they're, it's What they're essentially saying is if it's if it didn't happen in the Bible. Right. If it's not written in the Bible, then it didn't, it didn't happen. happen. And that's nuts. It is. It is nuts when you think that's about crazy. That's when Looney you think about book. are you saying this is the same thing with you know, talking about the divinity and humanity of Jesus, same thing. Are you saying that because the Bible doesn't talk about Jesus having bowel movements, that it didn't happen? That's exactly what they're saying. So all Which we, we know is crazy. So all we're saying is this, listen, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I usually don't put my opinion out there on things like this. With this one, it mattered to me what people were saying because i just felt like people were weaponizing the bible against other people yeah which people is were justifying it to me saying that the bible is a weapon listen the scriptures the word of god not the bible the scriptures the word of god is a weapon in the spiritual realm against darkness. It is not to be used against people. No. And I have seen people use the scriptures against people. But what really got to me with this one was it kind of came in layers where it started off with a little stuff about the commercial. Then someone asked the question, what's more theologically accurate? He gets us or we have to get him which I, and thankfully I saw a lot of people say both, which is true. Like we need to receive his love. Listen, we cannot love God without his love first. That's why Jesus said, love as I have loved. You can only love to that degree when you have his love in your life. So yeah, you need to understand that he gets you, that he understands you, that he knows who you are. He intimately knows you. And when you get that, then you're going to come to him. You will be compelled to want more of him because who wants to be around someone that you think, if you think God hates you, what do you do? There's shame. You turn your back. Is that not what happened to Adam and Eve? They went and hid because they had shame. And, yeah. G and God came out and said, no, 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 no. I will make clothes for you. I'm going to fix this for you. Right. It's a whole other thing. But what we want to do is really just encourage you, like, don't even take our word for it. Go look it up. Go look, look up this organization. Look at each picture and just, you know, make sure that when people share things that you're not taking verses out of, like, I had someone share a verse with me today. It wasn't even a complete sentence. And I just... We need to read the scriptures within context. We need to understand the scriptures. And if you have an opinion, don't go in the Bible looking for verses to justify your opinion. When we read the Bible, we need to read it to get to know who God is, not to justify our belief system. Because sometimes, and I'm speaking for personal opinion, from personal experience, sometimes our belief system is jacked up. It's wrong. We yep. believe things about God, about the world, about ourselves, that's not true. And through no fault of our own, through no fault of the people who taught us, it's just you only know what you know. And this is why we encourage you, and this organization also encourages you to go look at the life of Jesus. That's all they want is really just to get people to go and look at Jesus. So I just encourage you, like, read John 13, 13 through 18. Don't jump on the bandwagon of knocking other Christians down. We are judged to the degree of which we judge. We have seen people who have been highly critical and then they get slammed by other people. And I'm like, it's the law of judgment. You're going to be judged to the degree of what you judge. So we have to be careful when we're destroying Christian people and organizations when we don't personally know them. 
I know there's been some stuff with some preachers lately and some scandals with abuse and all that. Like, if you don't personally know them, I just caution you, like, just. Well, I, you know, who needs the accuser when we got Christians like this? Exactly. You know, the, 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 that's the devil's job, but we're doing it for him. And, um, you know, Jesus only washed the feet of his disciples. No. No, Jesus washed Jesus served and he was teaching, making a point that we were to serve one another. Yeah, he was. We were to serve and we were to be the answer yeah. to the world. And, and he was also, his teaching was get away from just loving your neighbor, but love everyone. everyone a new yeah. commandment I give you to love one another. And he wasn't just talking about those that agree with you. He was talking about the whole he world, said, Gentiles, enemies. sinners, enemies. He said, love right? your enemies. Cause like the Jews, just for the, for the audience, if you don't know a lot about Bible, like the Jews and Samaritans, they did not get along at all. And in their heads, they didn't have to love the Samaritans. They didn't like, if you read, you read that story, maybe tomorrow I'll share that uh, chapter on my Facebook page so you guys can read it on my blog. Like if you read that story, they didn't believe they needed to love the Samaritans and Jesus knew that. Yeah. That was part of the law. They weren't doing anything wrong. But Jesus said, no, I came to teach you to love your enemies. Like yeah. we are to love one another. It doesn't matter whether you agree or don't agree, whether you have doctrinal differences or even theological differences, because those are not the same thing. Yeah. Like we need to love and loving doesn't mean you have to agree. Mike and I are married and we don't agree on everything. No, There's things that we highly disagree and will one day share with you because I think you'd find it entertaining yeah. us going at it. And they're Christian things too. Like we don't agree, but we still love each other mm -hmm. because we have reasons and our goal in our relationship and in any relationship is understanding, you know, it's understanding and just hearing people because it's really good to hear. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I try. I try. I don't know. I don't agree with your understanding, but like people listening to us now, they may not agree with us and they may not agree with our understanding. And that's okay. Cause we have a specific lens too. I can promise you. And I'm you, very honest about that. If you only love and serve those that have you surrendered yeah, what? to the love of Jesus, who, who, what is the point? Jesus, Jesus even How said. How are you going to reach anyone? Jesus said, what house like basically i'm this is so me paraphrasing how special are you if you love people that love you back like there's nothing extraordinary about loving someone who we're, loves you back we're drawn to jesus we're changed by him because of his love yes it's because of his kindness that we are led to him without it we we've we've got nothing People always talk about repentance and yes, repentance is so important and a change is required. And Mike and I mentor people and trust me when I say we talk about repentance with those people sure. all the time because some people really need a change of life. But what people often overlook is the idea there's a verse, but also the idea that it's the kindness of God that leads to repentance. Does repentance need to happen? Yes. But what leads people to repentance is kindness. And you see Paul, everyone makes Paul out to be like, he's this like, because he used to persecute Christians, like he was a not nice person. But Paul is the one who talked the most about love. And in 1 Corinthians, he says like, you know, I could speak in tongues, but if I don't have love, I am nothing. If I can, you know, it's like a clanging symbol. If I don't have love, I am nothing. I, it, it's pointless. There's no point if there's no love. And again, love doesn't mean you need to support people in their wrongdoing. Cause one of the things of love is you don't accept wrongdoing, but there's a lot of other things that people overlook in the fruit of the spirit. And, and, be, and having patience and kindness and that, and you can do all those things without enabling bad behavior. You know, so, and, and, and to argue the other side of this meme that I saw or whatever, um, you could say in scripture in front of it, and that would work for, for parts of this, but you still got to deal with Judas. 
Yes. Who may have been a disciple, but he was not surrendered was and dedicated <laughs> to the teaching of Jesus he, anymore. He had turned against him. He, he had betrayed yeah. him. And he, Jesus he knew it was going to happen. He was in the middle of plotting to betray Jesus, like actively in a state of not repentance. Which is far <laughs> worse than worse. watching washing a random Sadducees feed or a right. random Pharisees feed. Because you would have expected more of Judas. He had been following Jesus, yeah, this learning from big him. Big time betrayal, and he still washed his feet. Yeah, so there's a lot of lessons that we can learn from John 13 and then all the way through 18. So I really just encourage you guys to check it out. Um, there's a lot of sensationalism, especially with po politics and media. Um, it's very easy to kind of... Bye, guys. To get caught up in the stoning of people, but always take a pause and ask. There's some things going on in the church, right? Uh, in some church leadership scandals, like I mentioned, that I have opinions about. And yes, they did something wrong. And I actually think the church is overlooking a part of what he did wrong um, that I personally uh it bothers me but what i'm not going to do is take to social media and stone this person because i'm not intimately involved i don't intimately know the details i can say that based on what it looks like you know there's things that are wrong but i'm not going to go stoning someone because i just don't know them well enough and i would hope that, you know, I am someone who's had people have taken my posts and broken them down and, you know, kind of like we did today, broken down what I said and nitpicked every single piece of what I said, completely not knowing my heart, not understanding the fullness of what I teach, of what I preach. It's just like a snippet. And like I said earlier on, you can't capture the full gospel even in a Sunday message. It's just not possible. It's so easy to take what someone says out of context. And it's happened to me. And this is why I have a lot of mercy and grace for people who I hear. And I go check things out. If I care enough, I go check it out. Because I don't want people doing that to me. I don't want people judging my heart, especially if they don't know me. And if we look at the Sermon on the Mount, the underlying theme that Jesus is saying is, I look at the heart. And the reality is that our actions depict only a certain, a, a certain a picture of who we are. But the reality is that people don't see our hearts, really. Only God can see our hearts. We can conclude things through patterns of behavior but we often don't even know enough about pattern of behavior. We throw stones at just like somebody doing one thing wrong. Um, so this is really what we wanted to share was Mike had to go back to work. But we just wanted to share our viewpoint, offer a different perspective, and really encourage that even if you don't agree with someone, before we publicly stone them, let's take a pause because, like, I was telling Mike earlier, I, I've been in interest, like, because I'm an intercessor, I've been in intercession meetings where, I mean, people spend hours and hours and hours praying for the different, the seven mountains and the entertainment mountain. And the last few years, there's been stuff happening where Christians are putting content out there and it keeps getting slammed and destroyed and nitpicked and all this stuff. And, and I'm just like, man, we've been, I feel like sometimes God must have whiplash because we pray for a door in that the message of Jesus gets out there. And then when it does, similar to this one, where they had 30 seconds, guys. I want you to think about that. They had 30 seconds. They had to pick, what are we going to do in these 30 seconds? And their website explains why they chose what they chose. 
it's, you know, it's just, let's be aware of, wow, God gave us this opportunity in this media mountain, entertainment mountain to have a commercial during the Super Bowl. God gave us this ability to have an episodic show about the life of Jesus. Instead of tearing them down, how about celebrating the fact that Jesus is on television, like he's on television. There's an actually great quality production that talks about the life of Jesus. And I don't agree with everything, but but I don't have to agree with everything because how do I know I'm right on everything? I'm not right on everything. So, you know, just let's be open, um, less critical, less, less judgmental. I'm not saying we can't judge things. The Bible does tell us to judge things. We need to judge actions and behaviors and patterns. We have to use our brain with things. But being judgmental is something different than judging. And I have, um, especially in the last two years, because it's something I was going through, I found myself being highly judgmental. And I've talked to a few close friends about this, being vulnerable with them, about how I caught myself, even personally, I don't share publicly or really with anyone other than Mike, but there are things that in my heart, I felt, wow, I've become very judgmental. Um, I do have opinions, but judgment's a little bit different. And I don't want to be that way because I don't want people to be that way with me because I've had people judge me without knowing me. People who have never met me judging me and who knows from what. And I don't want to be like that with people. And I don't want to judge people because I'm jealous, because um, you know, I covet what they have or you know, I think I can do it better because that comes from pride or, you know, like I don't want to be that way. Um, so I just encourage you to join me in that. Like, let's try to be less judgmental as Christians. Again, I've never seen, I've been Christian my whole life. I, I've been going, I've been doing evangelism since I was a little girl. I have never seen anyone come to Jesus after you tell them they're a sinner and going to hell. I've never seen it. And to be honest, most people, they know they're sinning. They know they're doing wrong things. They already have guilt and shame about it. And they don't pray and they don't go to church and they don't go to God because they're ashamed and they're, they feel guilty about it. And what they need to know is that God wants them, that God is calling them, that God loves them. And this is why I understand the concern about enabling certain things. I just think that we're overthinking a 30 second commercial and we're being highly judgmental. These people put their money where their mouth is and we needed that. And people have been interceding for that for years to get into the media mountain, which requires lots and lots of money. And, and these people are doing it. So I respect them for that. Would I take a different approach? Probably. I mean, you know, I'm not saying I agree 100%. But I just, let's stop killing one another. Because that's what we're doing. It's Christians killing Christians. Christians destroying Christians. And it doesn't look good. I'll tell you that much. Who wants to come into any organization that's fractured? Any company that's as fractured as we appear to be these last two days is an organization that's about to go out of business. It just, it a kingdom divided just doesn't stand. And division doesn't mean we, like unity doesn't mean we agree. That's uniformity. Uniformity is where we all agree and we're all a bunch of robots and we all think the same. That's not what Jesus called for. He called for unity. It's to come together and our coming together is around Jesus Christ. So I hope that's something that we can all get behind. So thank you guys for uh, being with us for this. I think it's our 10 minutes. Um, I definitely would love to hear your points. Um, if we misstated something, if we missed something, like I, we welcome comments. You don't have to agree with us. We just wanted to put our thoughts out there. So until next time, guys, bye.